Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy. So many. During the coronavirus lockdown, I've been fixing and refurbishing a lot of Game Boys. Among these systems, I've gotten my hands on a bunch of original DMG Game Boys, many of which with display issues. When these displays start to give up the ghost, they begin developing vertical lines of missing pixels. Now, there's already been a bunch of tutorials out there on how to fix this problem, but some people have asked me to do my own. So, today I'll show you how to restore the screens in these Game Boys to their former 8-bit glory. Although more rare of an occurrence than vertical lines, some original Game Boy displays can also develop horizontal lines, which are entirely possible to fix. For details on that process, check out my friend Rourke's video on how to do that. I've put a link to it in the description below. Here's the subject matter of this video, an original Game Boy with vertical lines on the outer edges of its display. As you can see, no matter what I do to adjust the display contrast on this handheld, the lines persist and refuse to go away. So to fix this problem, we'll have to open up the Game Boy to perform some open heart surgery. To perform this repair, the only tools you need are a temperature controlled soldering iron, some basic tactile tools like a blunt scalpel or some plastic spudgers, and a screwdriver set with a tri-wing bit and a Phillips bit. We'll start this off by removing the battery cover on the back of the Game Boy and then removing the six tri-wing screws from the back of the shell. Once the console opens up, don't yank it open too quickly, since the ribbon cable between the LCD board and the main board will still be connecting the two. To disconnect the ribbon, pull it downward gently but firmly to remove it from the friction slot on the logic board. With the ribbon off, get to work on removing the 10 Phillips head screws from the board on the front half of the Game Boy, and then remove the board from the front shell. I decided to wear some gloves midway through filming this. I probably should have put them on sooner, but better late than never. With the LCD board out of the front shell, reconnect it to the main board on the back half of the console. This will take a little bit of force to reinsert the ribbon into the friction socket, so be careful not to tear the ribbon or damage any of the conductive fingers on it. Now just throw some AA batteries in this thing for testing and power it up. You'll want to adjust the contrast so you can more clearly see the missing lines on the display. This rubber piece at the bottom of the display will have to be removed in order for us to get access to what we need, so carefully pull it away from its adhesive with a blunt scalpel or a spudger tool. For this next segment, you'll need use of your soldering iron. Set your iron temp to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I found this to be the optimal temperature for this repair, since it's not too cool, but also not too hot to potentially damage something. Use the wet sponge from your soldering station to shock all of the residual solder from it, and wipe the tip clean for good measure. You'll want to gently move your hot iron tip across the part of the ribbon directly underneath the dead spots on the LCD while applying light pressure to it to reflow the contacts underneath. The ribbon cable is very resilient and should not melt or be affected by the temperature of your iron. The adhesive layer will be affected by the heat in the treated spots, but this is to be expected and cannot be avoided. Continue moving your iron back and forth in these spots until you see life come back to the dead columns of pixels on your display. You may have to make multiple passes along the ribbon to get a lasting effect, but this repair should revive the originally dead spots of the display for the long term. Once I'm confident that my work with my iron has repaired the display, I apply light pressure with my finger to double check my work, and then I clean it up a bit by removing the damaged part of the adhesive strip. Afterwards, I replace the rubber strip at the bottom of the screen as well. Let's test this display with the game now to make sure everything works as it should. For this, let's use Kirby's Pinball Land.
Looks like everything is good to go with this repair. Before you put the Game Boy fully back together, clean your display with some isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth to remove all dust particles from it. I check my work one last time to make sure the display is still fine, and then set to work putting everything back together. I do normally show precisely how to do this sort of thing in my videos, but Game Boys are pretty straightforward. Just make sure that your buttons and the rubber membranes are back in the front half of the shell, clean out dust and dirt particles as you go, and replace every screw back into its proper hole as you reinstall it in the front half of the Game Boy shell. We'll slow down for a second so I can show you how to reconnect the LCD again. Like before, use gentle force to push the rigid part of the ribbon back into the friction socket. With that done, put your finishing touches on the system, and then close it up with the remaining six screws on the back. Overall, this LCD repair is good practice for Game Boy modders and refurbishers, or people looking to get into the hobby. It also helps you become more comfortable with using a soldering iron without actually doing any typical form of soldering work. In the end, these Game Boys are an important piece of gaming history, and they deserve careful love, attention, and restoration. If you liked today's video, you know what to do. Hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. As always, thanks so much for watching. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video.